Buenos dias and welcome back to another video, my friends. I hope that you're staying safe and I hope that you're staying healthy. Today on the channel, I wanna talk about the magic and art of light trails on the Canon EOS R and I have the 24 to 105 F4 RF kit lens. So last night I was in this very location up above the traffic and I wanted to shoot light trails and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to get but as I kind of maneuvered through my light trails I decided on what I wanted to do and light trails on their own are pretty simple you just open up the shutter get the right setting so it's fairly focused meaning focus to infinity or in the distance and put that on manual and just leave the shutter open. Five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Again, we would be in pitch darkness and we're gonna head back here tonight to go through this. I just wanna quickly go through the settings and my procedure for blending different light trails so you can have a really super magical and artistic photo. So real quick, what I did last night was I shot a series of about 10 photos. I pushed them into Photoshop and then I used what is called in Photoshop a stacked feature. And I'm gonna show you that later in post, but once you put them in that stack feature, you're able to choose what type of stack you want. And I went for a maximum stack, which gives me the maximum available uh, imagery from each photo and allows me to blend all, the, all these photos super easily. I'm gonna show you that. Here's an image that I shot last night and we're gonna to try to recreate that tonight, later tonight. We'll be back. All right, we're back and we're all set up here um, in the same place that we were earlier today. And the tough part about all of this, and I'll show you this uh, just here in a second as I'm talking, that there are sections of this area that aren't quite as busy in the evenings, which makes a lot of sense, as they were in the afternoon when I was here. So that's why I need to shoot multiple uh, light scenarios or light trails coming from different angles. So then in post, we can blend all those together and it just makes for a much richer or vibrant shot. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take 10 shots, we're gonna get through this and we're gonna go back to post and work that out. So glad you joined me, I'm glad you're still sticking around and um, let's get these shots off. So what I'm really looking to get, this guy right here has his lights off. I need a right turn <laughs> person, but uh, that guy right there has his lights off, so that's not gonna work. I actually only need one or two more shots from here. I already got a left-hand turn. Let me show you this one, uh, it's right here. This is a left-hand turn shot I just got about two minutes ago. And so that one's gonna be nice there. So now I need one coming from this side and making a right-hand turn. That's what I battled with last night. So we'll get it. So I think I got a truck coming right here. Either way, if it's uh, yes, it's gonna be a right turner. So hopefully he'll turn right. And we gotcha. Yes, and we got it right here. Let's check that out. That came out solid. That was a nice truck, and uh, it came out really good. All right, I don't think I've done a very good job of explaining this, so let me try it this way. So on the back of the screen, I have the camera, this camera here, mounted on a tripod. It is static in the same position for the last probably eight to 12 shots that I took. I have it in bulb mode, which means that I'm um, starting the shutter from the back of the screen. I'm just using the touch screen in the back. And I have it at F16, ISO 100, and I'm running it from anywhere from eight to 
18 to 30 seconds. In fact, the last one that I did was 30 seconds because I wanted to light up the building just a little bit more. So when I blend them all together, you'll have some of the building really light and I'm doing it all in camera so I don't have to do that much in post. So that's gonna do it from here. Um, I just wanted to re-explain this. Hopefully I was a little bit clearer there. And we'll go back into the studio and get on Photoshop and I'll show you how I blend my images. Hey, as promised, we're back in the studio and we're gonna get right into it. I've got Photoshop open here and we're gonna create a new document. And I'm gonna go ahead and create. And then I'm gonna come up here and go to File, uh, down here to Scripts and down to load files into stack. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select and make sure that create smart object after loading layers is checked. Now I'm gonna browse for my images. It's right here. Uh, numbers one through eight. I'm gonna select those. Thought I shot more than eight images, but okay, all right. Here we go gonna open those and hit OK and it's gonna process and you're gonna see some pretty these look pretty sharp these look pretty sharp yeah it's gonna look good so let it do its work and then what it's gonna do if you notice off to the right it's um, compounding all of these or um, layering all of these images and then when it's all said and done, it's gonna create a package as you see right here off to the right. And you're like, well, where did they all go? Okay, here's the next step. We're gonna go over here to layers. We're gonna go to smart object. And then we're gonna go to stack mode. And here's where you have some choices. And you can play around with this. You have entropy, maximum, mean, medium. And that's just the level of blending that the program is going to actually produce the image with. So I'm just gonna choose maximum because I want as much vibrancy and as much imagery from each photo, like I said earlier today, in the image. So I'm gonna choose maximum, let it do its thing and watch it before your eyes. Watch it, here it comes, here it comes. It might take a second. And the magic of YouTube, there we are. Um, that's, the, that's the image in itself. Um, it looks like I might have, I might have kicked the uh, tripod just a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah, this is okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, export, or I'm just gonna go ahead and save this as a TIFF file. Yep, right here, and we'll call it um, White Trails. Two. And we'll actually, yeah, we'll leave it in the DCIM. It's just easier to get to. All right, I'm gonna save that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Lightroom and I'm going to play around with it a little bit and edit the image. Okay, before we move on and get into Lightroom with tonight's image, I wanna show you last night's image. This is what it should have turned out like. Um, again, maybe I was just messing around too much with the filming and I must have kicked the tripod or something because last night's image, if you notice here, which I wasn't filming, I was just out there. It's pretty, I was just out there shooting and it's pretty sharp. Um, it's not bad. And um, yeah, it's, it's really sharp. I mean, you can see inside of these, um, <laughs> inside of these buildings, uh, even this guy with his uh, papers on the wall here. Some really cool stuff. So this shot came out marvelous and this is what's on my Instagram. I cleaned it up a little bit in Lightroom and pulled off some of this, um, just some of the trailing stars. Um, however, let's go ahead and move into the Lightroom version. I have uh, tonight's image in Lightroom. And as you can see, if, if I punch in, um, there's definitely a little less um, sharpness you can see there's some ghosting here on the papers that are on the wall. Plus, this person wasn't in their office tonight. We're not working late tonight. Anywho, let's just play around with this. Even though the image is just a little off, the idea is still the same. We were able to stack those images and blend those images. Pretty simple with just a couple of clicks. 
And as long as um, all the images are aligned when you shoot them, it's gonna look beautiful. So th it's done a good job of giving me all of everything that I wanted here in terms of um, the trails that I wanted to shoot, the right hand turn, uh, the straight up and down the the, uh, the boulevard there with the uh, headlights and the tail lights and a couple left hand turns you can see here. Um, although it is missing, if I shoot down here, oh here it is, you can see a tiny red stripe. I think I just got one car making a left and it was kind of a weak little light there, but that's okay, that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of editing with this, not much. Uh, bring up the contrast a little bit. Let's bring down the highlights a little bit, just a tad. Bring up the shadows a little bit. Let's get our true whites here, our true blacks. Okay, that's about good. Not clipping there. I like to add a little texture to these. Um, you know, 30 to 40 on the plus side. Sometimes I'll even bring up the clarity on this. My typical, um, my typical way of editing is I'll bring down clarity about minus 10 and bring up texture about 10 to 20. But on this, uh, on these light trails, I really like to play around with the um, with the clarity and the texture on these. It's just fun. It's just fun to kind of make them a little bit more gritty because they are light trails. D haze. You can see if you bring D haze all the way to the right, it's pretty vibrant. You can really light it up this way. So this D haze tool is really powerful for light trails and also for um, for star trails or stars. A um, little bit of vibrancy, and I'm gonna punch up just a tad. Okay, this is not looking so bad. That building in the back, it's a night it was built in the 1920s, so it is a nostalgic building and it looks pretty cool. I do like the this um, this light star back here. It's it's looking pretty nice. But like I said, we've got a little bit of double exposure going on there. So um, but that's okay. The idea was to be able to get into Photoshop and blend these and uh, get just you know the process down. Let's go. Oops. Let's go ahead and work on the tone curve in the individual RGB colors. So here's red. Yeah, leave it a little bit on that red side. I like that. Bring up the green and down into the purple a little bit. There we go. Just a tad. Just you can see these are very powerful depending on which way you move them you could do some really crazy things. And again, with light trails, I think I think it's appropriate with light trails to do whatever you wanna do. And, and in fact, you can do whatever you want with your photos, that's, that's the important thing. All right, I'll leave that alone. Uh, you can play with all the individual colors. Again, I could um, punch up the reds a little bit, get them real red almost pink, pinkish, hot pink. But uh, yeah, I'll leave them right there, nice and Corvette red, if you will. In the end, the idea was to take eight to 10 to 12 to 20 images and really just try to layer in all of the different light trails. That is just one way to blend some images, especially for light trails. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, here's one more image that I shot uh, a little bit later in the evening. So this one was shot just a block away um, from the ground level this time. The perspective is the ground level. And this is eight to 10 shots as well. And you can see there's just a myriad of lights going through this. I mean, you have left-hand turns, right-hand turns, oncoming traffic from both angle. It, I like it. And you have another historic building in the background. And I love how all the uh, street lights light up with their stars, as well as the, um, the stop and go lights. Overall, not a bad image. You can see that the 
Chapman sign right here is crystal clear. So this one tripod was definitely in one place. So that's gonna do it. I hope that was uh, entertaining for you. I hope that was something that you can go out and try yourself and you know, give me a jingle and let me know either on Instagram or through this video and leave me a comment if you are gonna go out and try this or have tried it before and you learned something new about stacking these images or tell me how you stack and blend images. There are a myriad of ways to do this so please share your ideas. It can help myself and others on this channel. All right, comment down below. Love to chat with you. Like this video if it provided you any value, uh, subscribe to this channel. I'd love to have you as part of this Buenos Dias imagery family and ring that bell to notify you of new videos when they are posted. All right, you guys, I love y'all. Until the next one, peace.